Hello? Hello? All right. All right, so thank you very much for the introduction. So this session is on cryptographic watermarking. So let's begin by discussing what watermarking actually is. So watermarking generally refers to a way of embedding a mark into some digital content like photos or images. And this is often used for people to identify who the owner of the content is and also to prevent unauthorized distribution of this content. So uh, you may have seen a version of a photo or an image that has the word sample embedded on top of the photo. So this is an example of a digital watermarking. Uh, so if you look at this photo and if you li really like this photo, then you can pay the photographer and the photographer can provide you with the original image that is not watermarked. So for these type of uh, scenarios, a watermarking scheme is useful only if it satisfies the following two properties. Well, first, it must be the case that uh, even after you embed a mark into some photo or an image, most of its original content should still be viewable. Uh, at the same time, um, it should be very difficult for anyone to remove this watermark without security altering or essentially destroying the original content of the image. So just like how we can talk about watermarking for photos and images, uh, we can also talk about watermarking for our software. So in this scenario, we want a way to embed a mark into some, uh, into some program or some piece of code uh, while preserving the functionality of the program. So we want the marked circuit, we want the final marks um, program to still be executable, uh, to still be executable and have the same input and output behavior as the original program. But at the same time, if an adversary comes along and gets access to this marked program, then it should be very difficult to remove this watermark without significantly altering or essentially destroying the original uh, program. So uh, more formally, we define a watermarking scheme with respect to two algorithms, so mark and verify. Uh, the marking algorithm basically takes in some marking key and some program, which we're going to model as a circuit. So it's going to take in a marking key and some circuit and some message, and it will output some circuit C prime that has the message M embedded inside it. And the verification algorithm will take in some verification key and some circuit C prime, and it will basically extract this message that's embedded inside the circuit or output bot. So this is the uh, syntax of a traditional message embedding watermarking scheme. Uh, so for this talk, though, I'll focus on a simpler, um, a simpler uh, variant where the message to be embedded inside the circuit is just a binary uh, bit. So all the circuits are either marked or unmarked. So in this case, the verification algorithm, sorry, the verification algorithm, uh, yeah. Um, all right, where was I? Yeah, so, so for this talk, we'll focus on a simpler uh, version of this, um, of the watermarking scheme where uh, all the circuits are either marked or unmarked. So the verification algorithm basically takes in a circuit and outputs zero or one, depending on whether the circuit is marked or not. Uh, so form, uh, so this, this is the syntax for, uh, um, this is the traditional syntax for a watermarking scheme. So what are some of the properties that these two algorithms are satisfied? Well, the first property is functionality preserving, which basically says that the mark circuit that's output by the marking algorithm should behave essentially like the original program. So it should, so how do we formalize this? Uh, well, we require that the input and output behavior of the marked and unmarked circuits uh, to be the same on all but a negligible fraction of the inputs in the domain. Uh, the second property is on removability, which basically says that no efficient adversary who is given some marked circuit C prime can produce another circuit, let's say C tilde, uh, that have the same input, that have almost the exact same input and behavior, input and output behavior as the marked circuit C prime, uh, but uh, the verification algorithm fails to detect it as a marked circuit. All right, so these are the formal definitions for a watermarking scheme. So let's see what we currently know about uh, cryptographic watermarking. Well, the first question that we should ask is, you know, what type of programs can we actually watermark? Uh, can we actually construct a watermarking scheme that works over arbitrary programs and still uh, satisfy functionality preserving and unremovability? 
Well, it turns out that the answer is no. The work of Coin et al. in 2016 uh, showed that watermarking is actually impossible for a large class of programs, uh, specifically programs that implement learnable functions. So functions uh, whose canonical representation can be easily deduced from the implement output behavior of the functions. Uh, so due to this impossibility, a lot of the research effort in this area has focused on constructing a watermarking scheme for cryptographic uh, functions. Uh, programs that implement cryptographic functions because cryptographic functions uh, represent a large class of uh, learnable, unlearnable uh, functions. So in this talk, we'll also uh, focus on uh, water, uh, constructing a watermarking scheme for uh, cryptographic functions and specifically for pseudorandom functions. So in the next talk, you'll hear more about uh, how we go about constructing a watermarking scheme for other cryptographic functions like digital signatures or, um, or public key encryption schemes. All right, so, what's, so what do we currently know about watermarking for uh, PRFs? Well, the first positive result came in 2016 by the work of Cohen et al, who basically showed that using an indistinguishability obfuscator and one-way functions, uh, we can watermark a large class of PRFs. And uh, a very nice property of their construction was that the resulting watermarking scheme was actually publicly verifiable. So this meant that all the users in the system can have access to a public verification key and run the verification algorithm themselves, uh, which is a really nice property to have uh, for most applications of a watermarking scheme. So a natural question that followed from their work was whether we can construct a watermarking scheme for PRFs just relying on standard assumptions. So uh, in 2017, uh, Kim and Wu showed that uh, this can indeed be done. They basically constructed a watermarkable family of PRFs just relying on standard uh, learning with errors assumption. And in contrast to the coin et al construction, uh, the construction of Kim and Wu was a privately verifiable uh, watermarking scheme. So since uh, this distinction will be relevant for explaining our result, uh, let me just quickly uh, compare the two uh, settings with pictures. So in a publicly verifiable setting, uh, all the users in the system uh, can have access to a public verification key. So if they have some circuit C prime that it wants to check whether it's marked or unmarked, it can just look up a public verification key from some cloud and just run the verification algorithm themselves. So in a private verifi verifiability setting, uh, the verification key uh, for the watermarking scheme have to be kept private from all the users in the system. So if a user has some circuit uh, that he wants to check whether it is marked or marked, it has to go to some verifying authority who would run the verification algorithm for the user. So uh, this uh, private uh, verifiability setting is uh, weaker than the public verifiability setting, but it is still useful for a lot of the applications of watermarking scheme. So this is basically how the landscape looked like in uh, 2017. So we had a privately verifiable uh, watermarking scheme from the learning with errors assumption, and we had a publicly verifiable watermarking scheme uh, from obfuscation. And I guess the big driving question in this area was whether we could go from a privately verifiable uh, watermarking scheme to a publicly verifiable watermarking scheme just relying on standard assumptions. So uh, just last year, there was a very nice work due to uh, Quash, Wix, and Zerdelis. Um, who basically constructed a privately verifiable watermarking scheme just using CCA secure encryption scheme and also a privately um, punctuable PRF. So uh, they basically showed that ju uh, just relying on um, CCA secure uh, encryption scheme and a, and a privately punctual PRF, they can construct a watermarking scheme for PRFs that achieves a much stronger security guarantee than the construction of Kim and Wu. So uh, recall that in the private verifiability setting, all the users in the system have to go to a central, go to a verifying authority to check whether a circuit is marked or unmarked. So well, in the Kim Wu construction, if there was some malicious user in the system who had arbitrary access to a verifying authority who would act as a verification oracle to the, to, uh, the user, then security was actually compromised. So if so, a malicious user can uh, cook up some circuit and send it over to the verifier, and the verifier responds with uh, either marked or unmarked, uh, and the user uh, uh, constructs another circuit, and another circuit, submits another circuit, and so on, then after some point, uh, the malicious user in the system can get enough information to remove, to remove any mark from uh, any marked circuit. So in the setting of proof systems, this is sometimes called the verifier rejection problem. So for the setting of watermarking, this is actually not so much of a problem for a lot of the applications where verification can be done uh, less frequently, like in, um, in uh, legal disputes and so on. But this is still not a good property to have for you know, many other, for most other applications. 
So uh, the QWZ construction uh, bas basically completely removed this verify rejection problem from the original chemo construction, which is really nice. And the construction is also quite simple and um, quite clever. So I think I encourage everyone to read their paper. Uh, I guess um, the, the QWZ construction uh, had all, some of its own caveats, um, however. And this is related to the security against the verifying authority. So, <clears throat> so, um, so the PRF family that QWC effect Quashita construct is a perfectly fine PRF. It is a secure PRF against any users in the system who does not have access to a verification key. But to the verifying authority who has access to the verification key, the PRF family was completely insecure. So the verification key that the authority has basically acts as a trapdoor or some backdoor information to the PRF that clearly compromises uh, the security of the PRF family. So it's actually important to kind of understand this uh, sort of point. So for Mark circuits, uh, it's actually, uh, for Mark circuits, um, satisfying this traditional notion of pseudorandomness against the verifying authority is actually impossible. Well, first, um, the, the, okay, the watermarking authority needs access to the PRF key in order to uh, watermark the circuit. And second, the verification algorithm itself becomes a distinguisher for the underlying unmarked circuit. However, for unmarked circuits, uh, they, uh, however, unmarked circuits should still satisfy some level of pseudorandomness against the verifying authority. Uh, so if a user in the system just happens to, uh, if a user in the system generates its own PRF key and uses it for different purposes, but does not watermark this PRF, then this PRF should still be pseudorandom to the authority who has, um, who has access to the verification key. And in fact, even for, unmark, even for marked circuits, security against the authority is actually well-defined. So we can consider a scenario where the marking pr procedure is done by a secure two-party computation between the authority and the user. So the marking authority can send in a marking key and the, the user in the system uh, submits the circuit that it wants to get it watermarked. Uh, in this scenario, the verifying authority actually never learns the PRF key of the users in the system. So, so security against the authority is actually well-defined for marked circuits. And due to the verification algorithm, strong pseudorandomness uh, against the authority is actually not well-defined, but marked circuits can still be a secure, a perfectly fine weak PRF against the authority. Okay? So, um, <clears throat> Uh, and uh, I guess weak PRF still services for a lot of the applications, symmetric crypto cryptography, like symmetric encryption. All right, so this is basically our, uh, where our work comes in. So in this work, we construct a new privately verifiable watermarking scheme from PRFs uh, from the standard uh, learning with errors assumption. Uh, so we basically remove this verify rejection problem that was evident in the Kimu construction, uh, just like the QWC construction. Um, and our, the PRF family that we construct uh, is actually guaranteed, has some security against the verifying authority. In particular, we can provide, uh, the PRF family can provide a weak pseudorandomness uh, against the authority. So uh, actually we, um, the PRF family that we construct actually satisfies a stronger, uh, stronger security definition called T-restricted pseudorandomness. Um, but um, for this talk, I will not define uh, what this is. So I refer to the paper for the uh, specific definition. And uh, I guess uh, a nice property of a construction is that the security relies on a much weaker uh, variant of the LW assumption compared to previous works. So, so the security of a construction relies on approximating, on the hardness of approximating uh, short, on worst case lattice problems to only nearly polynomial approximation factors, while in previous works uh, we needed a sub-exponential approximation factors. So, <clears throat> Along the way of achieving these results, uh, we define this new abstraction called extractable PRF, which we think is also uh, a very natural notion and which we believe is of independent interest for future works. All right, so in the last uh, few minutes that I have, let me just give a quick overview of what we do at a, a technical level. So I guess, as in previous works, uh, we rely on this object called punctual PRFs, um, which is just like a standard PRF, but, they have, but it has this uh, puncturing algorithm that basically takes in a standard PRF key and punctures it at some specific point, let's say X star, to derive a new puncture key. And this puncture key can be used to evaluate the PRF on all points in the domain except for at this punctured point. And in, in addition to the traditional definition, in addition to the tra traditional requirements of a puncturable PRF, we can define an additional set of properties that's useful for watermarking. So we can first define this notion of private puncturing, which basically says that the puncture key uh, does not reveal any information about the point that it is punctured at. 
And we can also define this notion of programmability, which basically says that given some specific output, let's say y star, a puncturing algorithm can puncture a key such that the PRF evaluation at the puncture point basically evaluates exactly to uh, y star. So if you had a puncturable PRF that basically satisfies all of these properties, then it's actually relatively straightforward to construct a watermarking scheme. Uh, to, it is actually relatively straightforward to watermark such a PRF. So uh, we can basically define this uh, marking algorithm to basically just puncture the PRF in a specific way. So what the marking algorithm will do is it will take in a PRF key to a watermark. It will derive this special uh, uh, input and output pair, X star and Y star, and it will just puncture the PRF key uh, such that the PRF evaluation at this point X star uh, outputs uh, Y star. And the verification algorithm is quite simple. It will, given some circuit, it will just derive this input and output pair, uh, the specific input and output pair, and just test if the circuit evaluates to Y star on input X star. So if you don't care about this uh, verifier rejection problem, then this is actually perfectly fine, whoops. This is a, perf this is a perfectly fine uh, PRF, perfectly fine uh, watermarking um, scheme for uh, the PRF. So basically the security relies on the fact that the point X star, uh, that's the special point X star, is remained hidden from the adversary, which is guaranteed by a privately puncturable PRF. So, but however, if the adversary has access to the verification oracle, then even if you use a privately puncturable PRF, the special point X star is completely revealed by the adversary, uh, revealed to the adversary. So what the adversary can do is uh, do this binary search attack where it can just, given some PRF circuit, it can just change half of the inputs, half of the, the outputs of half of its input and just submit it to the verifier. And depending on the output of the verification oracle, uh, the, the, adversary, the adversary can tell whether this a special point X star lies in the modified set or the unmodified set. Okay, and so by, uh, each, by making a call to the verification oracle, the adversary is able to rule out uh, half of the inputs for which uh, X star does not con contain it. And so the, verif the, so the adversary can repeat this procedure over and over again, and each time it can um, rule out half of the input and, and eventually, uh, leak the special point X star. And so the question, uh, so the question that, the, so the first question that we ask in, um, in this work is, you know, um, can we actually force an adversary to rule out only a small fraction of the inputs? So is there a statistical test that the verification algorithm can run to force the adversary to rule out only a very small fraction of the inputs such that an efficient adversary cannot rule out, cannot efficiently uh, rule out, uh, <laughs> now efficiently rule out a large fraction of the inputs in, in uh, efficiently to recover X star. All right, so, so this is where the, our new notion of extractable PRF comes in. So technically, this extractable PRF is an independent notion, uh, so independent notion that is separate from the functional PRF. But for, for this talk, let me just uh, explain it as uh, an additional property that we can add on to a functional PRF. So we say that a puncturable PRF is extractable if there exists a special point, a Z, for which if you evaluate the PRF on this special point, then it gives you an encoding of the original PRF key K. Okay? So uh, if you know this special point, a Z, uh, and you're given a PRF circuit, then you can evaluate the PRF on the special point C and uh, get some information about the original PRF key K. So this encoding of the PRF key K is still pseudo-random to anyone in the system who does not have access to a trapdoor information for the PRF, but, to, uh, uh, but, but with access to a PRF, uh, to, to access to a trapdoor associated with the PRF, you can completely recover uh, the original PRF key that's associated with the extractable PRF, uh, <coughs> extractable PRF. And uh, I guess our plan is to basically encode this, uh, basically move uh, this special point Z and this trapdoor uh, information to a watermarking verification key such that, the water, so that, such that the verification algorithm for the watermarking scheme can extract, uh, this, uh, extract the original PRF key and run some, verification, uh, run some statistical test on the adversary's verification queries. Right, so, uh, so this is basically our uh, watermarking scheme. So if we had an extraction, uh, if we had an extractable PRF, then we can actually construct a watermarking scheme as follows. So the marking algorithm uh, basically remains the same as before. It will basically derive this special input and output pair, X star and Y star, and just program this input and output pair uh, to the truth table of the PRF. 
And the verification algorithm also stays the same, so it basically um, tests, uh, it derives this special input and output pair and tests whether the circuit evaluates to Y star on input X star. But uh, since we're using an extractable PRF, uh, this verification algorithm will run some, uh, some additional statistical test on the adversary's um, queries to the verification oracle. Right, so uh, it will first, on given uh, a circuit to uh, verify, it will basically extract this, uh, extract the original PRF key that's associated with the circuit using this information of trapdoor. Okay, and it will basically run a statistical test to see if the circuit that is inputted to the verification algorithm and the PRF that's, defi that's defined by the PRF key to be um, similar, uh, to have similar input and output behavior. Okay, and uh, the verification algorithm will basically accept uh, the, ver the circuit as a marked circuit if only if both of these conditions are satisfied. Now the, ver now the adversary cannot actually run this uh, binary search uh, algorithm, binary search attack, because if the adversary uh, changes, modifies the output on half of the input, uh, then, uh, well first, then either the, ver the key ex then either the key extraction will fail, in which case the verification algorithm will output zero, uh, or the, the key extraction will succeed and will be able to detect whether the circuit uh, C differs from the, PR from the original PRF on a sufficiently large uh, amount of, okay, uh, uh, differ on a sufficiently large amount of input. So this is basically how uh, we achieve uh, um, unremovability in the presence of uh, the verification oracle. So for security against the authority, it's actually quite simple. So if you actually look at the PRF domain of an extractable PRF, there's actually only two set of special points, X star and Z. And so by the, by the correctness of the PRF, uh, by the correctness of the original punctual PRF and pseudo-randomness uh, of the original punctual PRF, as long as the PRF is actually not evaluated on these uh, two special points, then it's actually pseudo-random. Right, so, Okay, so unfortunately, um, due to time, I'm, I'll not be able to cover a lot of the technical details that's in the paper. So I guess how do we actually construct this extractable PRF? Uh, so we do a lot of work in the paper to construct this, extra this object of extractable PRF. Um, so in the paper, uh, so actually the statistical test that is actually run by the verification algorithm is a little bit more involved than, that, than uh, I described. So. <clears throat> Uh, so I will refer everyone to the paper. And also this defining, uh, defining the right notion of extractable PRF is actually uh, much more difficult um, than it seems. So I will also refer the details of this, paper, of this definition uh, to, the, to the paper. Right, so let me actually conclude with some open problems. I guess uh, there is no, uh, so in the paper we actually do a lot of work to construct this extractable PRF using algebraic techniques. Um, I think there may be some generic techniques that might give you this extractable PRF. So for instance, can we uh, use a CCA secure encryption scheme to construct the extractable PRF? I think that's possible, but um, right now it's actually not clear. And also, um, I guess the big question in this area is whether we can actually uh, get, to, get from a private verifiable watermarking scheme to a publicly verifiable watermarking scheme, uh, just relying on standard assumptions. All right, so that's basically it. Thank you very much. If you have a, a question, please come to the microphone. Okay, do you have any hope to achieve uh, okay. uh, publicly very high watermarking scheme for PRF from uh, uh, standard assumptions? Uh, uh. Well, I guess that's very hard to tell, but if you ask me, then I think it's possible, but at this point, I guess it's not really clear, but yeah. Hey, uh, uh, yeah. is there some relationship between extractable PRFs and like the robustly unobfuscatable PRFs? I forget exactly what they're called. The ones that you can't obfuscate as long as uh, they approximate the original. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, well, I'll ask that. you at the point. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> let's bring this up, yeah. More questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker.